I have a couple questions about the sustainable fashion movement going forward. And I think it deserves us having a conversation about it. I have a couple questions, and this will kind of give you a peek into why the channel is called A Conscious Pause, because on the surface, things can look like amazing, perfect, rainbows and unicorns. It could sound really cute and awesome, and oh, someone's wanting to help something, someone wants to live consciously. Yes, that's all great, but when you Take a second to pause, to step back and review the information that's being given to you. Then you can kind of start to follow this line of questioning, this curiosity about what something really is, about underneath the surface. Is this really what I'm being told it is? Is this really the experience I want to have? Is this really as good as folks are making it seem? And I say that because I have a couple questions about the sustainable fashion movement going forward. And I think it deserves us having a conversation about it. Now, if you didn't know this, it was rather difficult curating the sustainable recommendations for fall 2022 according to the season's trends, partially because of limited brand provided sustainability reports and environmental impact as, guess what? (laughs) Recycled plastics are still plastics and partially because of some of these brands' unethical scandals, but primarily because ethical and eco-friendly garment prices are slowly inching their way towards those of Atelier ready-to-wear lines. If you were to Google this occurrence, there are several articles detailing why sustainable fashion prices are so expensive. Anyone who participates in the fair fashion movement understands that wares following responsible guidelines come with an expensive price tag. However, the hefty prices associated with these garments are just getting more exorbitant and astronomical. Post-pandemic inflation may be playing a role into all of this, yes, but it's hard not to see that there's been a rise in sustainable brands shutting their doors. In theory, I'm thinking label shutdowns could be due to industry prices increasing from an average of $100 to $180 per piece to $250 to $500 per piece, depending on the brand, cut, production process, factory practices, wage agreements, and materials. Now, if we were to break this down, like, why is this a problem? It's a problem because the average working class American consumer takes home between $34,248 $34,248 to about $51,480, with the middle class earning an average of $53,413 to around $106,827, according to policy advice. Now, there's a stark difference between these income estimates, which don't take into account racial, gender, age, disability, immigration-based disparities, or worldwide averages. Although this data was gathered in 2018 to about 2021, these median salaries show the continuation of the class divide. What am I getting at? Well, long story short, salaries aren't mirroring skyrocketing prices. It's becoming harder to find ethically made and sourced clothes or products that most folks can actually afford. Even if they want to or need to participate in the movement for, say, health reasons or to reduce their intake of toxins. And after years of folks asking why sustainable fashion is so expensive, brands are starting to host their own recycled and pre loved e commerce marketplaces or collections. These in house resale programs encourage consumers to send back their used and worn pieces to receive discounts or store credit. Some brands are using these programs as a ploy to introduce fair fashion to consumers seeking affordability. However, $40 discounts and credits certainly won't be enough to make a dent in 
$180 to $500 garments. The truth remains, the majority of people who reside in the working class cannot afford garments vying for the fair wages of others. Oh, we love the irony, don't we? Now, I have a couple questions. If those in the majority class can't afford the pieces that, that demand corporate responsibility and better of the fashion industry, then how does product move? How are the fair treatment, pay, and working conditions for garment workers supposed to be supported? How can everyday folks vote with their dollars and demand a production cycle that's kind to the earth? It begs the question if social good and impact brands are skimming some off the top, essentially engaging in their own perceived moral version of price gouging and fair washing. It makes me wonder if the sustainable fashion movement is getting hijacked to become a status symbol for the few. It's getting to the point, really, truthfully, honestly, where we must ask ourselves if the sustainable fashion movement is becoming an exclusionary classist postural movement and expression preserved only for the middle to upper classes. We must ask ourselves if the movement too is becoming more about putting profits for people and the planet. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Woo, y'all. Okay, I just had to be serious with y'all. Okay, look. This has been bothering me for a long time, okay? As someone whose income, all that kind of stuff, what is that called? Has fluctuated throughout the years. I really hate to see this movement uh, going in the direction that it seems to be going in. <sighs> I wish there could be a fair middle ground and I wish it could be clearer why prices continue to go up and up and up because it was really hard for me to find sustainable alternatives for the fall trends it was like everything was five hundred dollars blazer top dress it was like endless and it shocked me it stunned me it's like this is the direction the movement is going in especially with fair washing which is something that i've learned on the back end uh at working for companies that claim to be about inclusivity and diversity to find out that they really would rather not listen to me or uh, treat me respectfully and not have that many others who have a little melanin in their, you know, okay. Um, I've had my fair go with fair washing from an employee side, from a consumer side, and it makes me sad to see this movement that started out as wanting to do something incredible with fashion as what fashion at the time with the hype and rise of fast fashion was becoming one of the top sources of pollution um, that was harming our planet. And of course, to remedy some of the awful work environments that garment workers are subjected to, the unequal and unfair pay that they're subjected to, this movement started out with great intention. But it's becoming very clear where it's going. Everyone is trying to jump on the money train right now, and they are using the buzzwords. They are uh, pulling on your heartstrings to get you to buy in to this idea of fairness, to buy into this idea of ethics and responsibility. And there are very few out here doing that. And it makes me sad because it seems like the ones who are closing their doors are the ones who are really about it. So just keep that in mind as you're going forward as a consumer. I don't have all the answers. We, you know, no one has all the answers. We have to really look into these things and research, which is, yes, very hard and confusing and unfair for consumers to have to question if their money really is going towards the causes and issues that they care about. You know what? I just, 
I felt a type of way and I felt like I needed to just say it and get it off my chest and leave the comment sections open for y'all to have a conversation about it. Okay. So um, with that, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate and I'm grateful for any time that we get to spend here together. In case you didn't know, this video is also available as a podcast. Check out the description box for affiliate links, links to my other channels, and all the resources that I mentioned here in this video, like articles, so you can check them out if you'd like, and to the Patreon if you would also like to support the channel. So that's going to be it for today's video. So with that, thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourself, others, and the planet. Bye! Now, if you were to Google this occurrence, is my... Why my curl acting like that? Why my curl look like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, do you know which curl I'm talking about? I think you do. It's out here wiling. You know what I'm saying? But I kind of want to let it do its thing as I push it down. It looked it better the other way. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> okay, whatever. Moving on. <laughs> um, okay, it's back. It's back to where it was. Okay, anyway. Let's see. Okay, let me change this because it keeps saying prices, process. Okay. Um, <clears throat> six, eight, 106. These incomes. Yes. Yeah. Although this data, data, do you say data or data? Okay, anyway. The fair. Mm -mm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Bye. Okay.